everybody welcome back to she creates it by brandy jean in today's video i have made candlesticks out of stuff you can find at the hardware store and stay tuned to the end to see a bonus of what else these could be used for so let's get into the video so first what you're going to need are some legs of different lengths some clay or uh, terracotta bottom to pots some E6000 and a wrench of some sort to take out the screw. So what I did was I wanted to keep the strength of the piece. So I screwed them together to see if I would like the fit of them. And it seemed to work pretty well. So I'll still use the E6000 in between them. And here I'm just pulling the one screw out a little bit so that it fits longer into the other leg. And then I decided to set them at an angle to kind of create an interesting effect in the middle of it. On the longer one here, I had to remove the screw because that's going to go against the terracotta. So I like the effect of having two different sizes but you could certainly make this the same size. So I'm just reading the instructions on the E6000, which says 24 hours or more to completely cure. So I am going to put them together and come back in 24 hours when they are all dried and start painting and aging them. I was just making sure I like the way I had them positioned and make sure and take off the stickers on the bottom because they will show if you do not remove them even over paint. So I applied a generous amount of E6000 to the top of the leg but not so much that when I pushed it down it was spewing out the sides. And just make sure you get it decently centered and take a step back and look and see if it's balanced. And if it's extremely off, you might have a pot that is not made correctly or a leg that's uneven on the bottom or top. Um, my best suggestion to you would be to sand the leg a little bit until you can get it to sit evenly upright. So remember to leave this to dry for at least 24 hours so before you start painting. I decided to use two different chalk paints, a home decor blue and a Rust-Oleum white. So once they're completely dried, it's time to start painting. I did not do any sanding or prep to this. I just went straight in with the blue and this is Glacier by Folk Art. And I just went into every nook and cranny and painted the terracotta the same. I tried not to worry too much about what it looked like because as you'll see at the end, the last effect I do will take down any kind of raised area in the paint.
So after the first layer of the blue chalk paint was dried, I attempted to paint it over with the Rust-Oleum white and it was not having the coverage I wanted. So what I decided to do was to mix the glacier blue and the linen white together to form a thicker light blue paint. And I just covered the entire candlestick as I had before, making sure to get in all the grooves. What will happen at the end is with the final effect that darker blue will show up slightly so it'll give it that aged look but without being overtly different. I had thought that white would have looked nice and that's something I still may try in the future but the paint, the chalk paint that I had was not working for that effect. Let this chalk paint dry completely before moving on to the last step, which is what you guys have all been waiting for to see this new technique. And what I used was steel wool. So what you do, and it works great because it's not so abrasive on the terracotta pots to take them down to the terracotta, but it does pull off ever so slight paint so you can see the color you put on underneath so it's nice to have two tones and two layers of paint but what it also does is it adds a silver from the actual steel wool to the piece and you will see this in the end i will give you a close-up as to the effect that it creates but i focused on the high rise points just as you would with sandpaper so the raised edges i went up and down on the straight parts, I went around in the circular parts. I didn't go too heavy on the terracotta parts, but just enough so that it would have that silver aged look to it. And one added bonus to this technique is it takes the chalk paint down a little bit as well and softens it. So if you have any raised edges or your finish is not completely smooth, this softens that look up while adding an aged patina. The only drawback to this method is the steel wool does tend to break down. As you can see under the piece, there was a lot of steel wool. You'll see in the top of the candlestick, there was a lot of flakes of steel wool. So you need to kind of be careful not to be breathing in metal shards. 
as well as at the end, I will need to take a clean, dry paintbrush or any other kind of fluffy brush to dust off all the nooks and crannies and make sure that there's nothing left behind after I'm done sanding it with the steel wool. So here is a side-by-side -side of one of them that has been rubbed down with steel wool and the other one has just had the two coats of chalk paint. And you can see how smooth the steel wool finishes. This is the one just done with two layers of chalk paint. It's rough. It doesn't have a lot of dimension to it. It's a very flat, rough texture. Whereas you'll see in the next photo that this one has that silvered brushed look and it's patinaed, it looks aged. No one would believe that you just painted this based on this effect. And I've staged it with a candle, very easy, straightforward. However, I also found another piece that would work great with this. I have a fake terrarium that fit perfectly in the top of this and it created a pedestal for this terrarium. So you can definitely play with this. It doesn't have to be just for candlesticks. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe 